Uh, Preseason camp's officially done, uh, which uh, I know the kids are excited about that. You know, it's it's an exciting time of the year when you start preseason camp, but uh, you know, after three weeks, you know, they're tired of each other as far as you know that that being who they face, uh, and they're ready to face another opponent. And so, uh, you know, I think a successful camp from a standpoint of, uh, I think we know, you know, what we have, where we are. Uh, I think we've seen the places that uh, are our strengths. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, everybody's excited about uh, moving on to uh, our opening opponent. So good day today. Uh, no uh, serious injuries or anything like that. Um, so should be uh, should be going into Appalachian State prep, uh, you know, with a full full roster. So uh, and that was like, again, I said it, uh, you know, on the on the air there uh, right after the scrimmage. That was my biggest uh, concern going into today was just making sure we came out healthy 12 days, 12 days out from game day. So. Questions? <clears throat> Coach, I know you said you wanted to see a lot of the, the kicking and maybe some of the backup quarterbacks perform. What, just what were your overall thoughts on that, those two things in the scrimmage? Well, I think, you know, in the kicking game, I've been pleased with our specialists overall uh, throughout the preseason camp. And I think you saw today, you saw some really good stuff from those guys. Um, you know, the backup quarterback, we just, we've got we to figure out who it is. And, you know, right now we're waiting on somebody to really take firm control. I mean, I think um, Mason's done some really good things. Uh, some of the other guys have done some really good things. But, uh, you know, it's, I think that you saw today, we have a really good starter uh, and we really need to bring whoever number two is along. Kind of going on that uh, with the kicker, uh, Lath had a couple opportunities to kick off and got right. in the end zone, and then Owen made a field goal. Is there a chance you could have one doing one and another one yeah. doing that? Yeah, I mean, I, we're going to travel at least two kickers, so um, you know, ideally, you'd want you'd want maybe to share duties. Uh, you know, it's there's a there's a lot that goes into that kickoff specialist more than than people think. I mean, it's placement of the ball, it's hang time. Uh, it's, you know, being able to kick the ball accurately with whatever the call is uh, for the kickoff team. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, Lath certainly has demonstrated in camp. He's got a very strong leg and a lot of potential. Um, but, you know, I think Owen has just been a guy that's been very, very steady. So we'll see how all that kind of plays out. You know, we want to kind of finish looking at the tape. I'm only, you know, just a third of the way through it right now uh, and just really sit down and discuss uh, within our staff before we make final decisions. Coach, you're several weeks into this now. Can you address the progress overall of the offensive line? Well, I mean, I think uh, you, know, you saw today our, our first group, I think, is very solid. Um, yeah, I think we have a couple of guys that are in that second group that, uh, you know, I would consider them to be starters also. Uh, so I think, you know, compared to where we have been, you know, the last couple of seasons at, th at this point, I think we're, you know, we're in a much better place depth wise. We're in a much better place overall talent wise. So, um, you know, it's, they face a lot going against our defense because our defense is so multiple. Uh, and so I think that's a good thing as far as their preparation uh, because, you know, they've, they've had to, you know, block against a lot of different, uh, a lot of different looks. Hey, Coach, you got a lot of um, returning um, players from last year, um, a lot of experience. How's that coordinate, or how's that um, kind of come into your um, team culture this year? How are the guys really getting along in camp? Well, I think the, you know that's that's something that's is certainly a strength. Um, you know, the guys we have a very positive culture in the in the locker room. Uh, you know, I think anybody that's been around one of our team meetings, you know, before I come in there, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's a real positive vibe from everything. It's, it's a group that, you know, they take pride in the way they play on the field. They take pride in the way they carry themselves around campus. Uh, and we have new players come in. Uh, Rob uh, Vanderlin uh, came in this, this uh, summer, and he just commented to the coaches just how, you know, how welcoming our locker room was and just, you know, how everybody tried to work to make him feel uh, like he was a part of them almost immediately. And so I think that really speaks to just, you know, kind of the culture and character of that roster. So I do think that's a strength of the program. Uh, 
uh, Coach Macy O'Donnell placed on scholarship at the end of the <laughs> scrimmage. Just uh, take us through that moment and the reaction. Well, just, you know, he's he is a guy that's, you know, he was here when I got here and uh, he, he works so hard. He, he wears so many different hats for us. Um, he's, you know, he's going to be on the four core special teams. Uh, he has taken a lot of snaps at tailback uh, this uh, this fall. Uh, you know, with Sneed and Josai sideline today, he took a lot of snaps in the slot. So he's a very versatile guy. Uh, and you know, he's he's a loyal core guy too. You know, strong character. Uh, already has his undergraduate degree. Uh, you know, very popular in the locker room. And so, you know, it's, you know, Coach Kirkpatrick and I made the decision um, that uh, he had earned that. And so I just, I wanted to do it you know, in a way that was special for him. And so we did it in, at the end of the scrimmage to where all of his teammates are around there with him. And, you know, it, all it took was the mention of that. And you saw the reaction, anybody that was in the stadium saw the reaction of his teammates. I think that says a lot about him. Uh, and how everybody feels about him. I think it also says a lot about just that, 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 that group right there and how much they care about each other. So uh, really proud of him. Uh, he's just an outstanding young man, great representative of our university. Coach, dovetailing on that, um, ECU does have a notable history with walk-ons. What has ECU done to get walk-ons a chance uh, given the roster limits, given the waiver that the NCAA right. had? Well, you know, it's this is the biggest roster we've carried into the season. Um, there's lots of issues that go along with that that nobody else has to deal with other than uh, John Gilbert and the administration and myself. You know, it's you know Title IX uh, within the athletic department really limits uh, you know uh, some things. So you know, I think that's that's the frustrating thing about the NCAA just you know kind of throwing that blanket waiver out there and uh, you know now the institutions are left to uh, kind of work through how to how to make it work but uh, you know within our programs you know wherever I've been uh, it has always been uh, an opportunity where you know you 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 earn what you get you know so you know you come here with, as, as a walk-on Elijah Morris Tyler Sneed now Macy O'Donnell, you come here as a walk-on and you go out there and you perform on the field, you'll be rewarded. And I, I tell the kids, I, I could care less. I don't care what your name is. I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you're from. I don't care if you're a scholarship walk-on. I don't care. The best players are going to play and the best players will, you know, separate themselves by the way they perform on the practice field. And, uh, you know, so it's, I think this is a place where you can, you can come here and get a chance. And I think that uh, you have numerous, uh, you know, examples of that on our roster. Coach, this is year three. And can you kind of talk about the overall work that's been put in and the design for moving the program forward and how you expect the adjustments to pay off this year? Well, I think that, uh, and you look overall at where we are today compared to where, you know, we stood at this point in 2019, uh, and we have a very stable program. You know, we have a stable roster that's healthy. Uh, and what I mean by that is you have depth at every position across the board. You have young talent uh, at every position across the board. Um, you know, you have, you're, you know, you're at your numbers scholarship-wise. You're at your numbers roster-wise. You have a positive culture in the locker room. Uh, you have a stable staff, uh, you know, both on the field coaching staff and support staff, um, and and you have talent on the field. Um, you know, there were just there were just so many holes and gaps and lapses and and things like that when we got here. It's been very very hard to fix, and it's it's been painful going through that. Um, but you sit here today, and you have a healthy young roster that uh, is only going to improve every single day they're here as a result of getting bigger, faster, stronger, and more experienced. So that's why I say, you know, repeatedly, you know, I really like this bunch. Uh, you know, I, we're very close, uh, and I believe in them, and, uh, and I, I can't wait to watch them compete this fall. Hey, Coach, um, looking at the past several years, I mean, this is the first time that we've had continuity on the def defensive side of the ball at yeah. the coordinator position. Can you tell us a little bit about how how you see that helping us uh, move forward? Well, I mean, I think anybody that watched the scrimmage today can see it. I mean, it's night and day. You know, one, we, we run very well. 
Um, but two, you know, all those guys in that field have experience, and they have experience in the scheme that's being run with the coaches that are calling the plays. Um, you have continuity on the coaching staff. You know, all of us have worked together for a while. Um, you know, Tim and Steve, you know, aren't, haven't been with us everywhere we've been, but they've adapted very well, uh, you know, to our core group in there. And, you know, it's, there's, there's no hesitation in the way they play. They play fast. I mean, you look at the way those linebackers trigger, and and you look at the way, you know, there's no hesitation when it comes to contact. You, know, you look at the way the safeties tackle, the way the corners cover. It's just they have confidence in themselves. They have confidence in the scheme. Uh, they have confidence in the mentality, uh, and it's consistent. It's consistent consistency with everything across the board on that side of the ball, and that's why I, I'm just I'm really excited to see them play. I mean, I think that you're going to see a much improved group. With Tyler Snead, I know we're not at, at game week yet, but the the red jersey, I mean, yeah. if you have a plan, I'm assuming by App State, is there any concerns of, of him health-wise, or are you okay? No. I mean, he, he could have went today. Um, it was it was more me than it was the athletic training staff. Um, I know what Tyler Snead can do. Uh, there's no point in, in putting him out there today for contact when he you know, hadn't had contact this week. So, you know, he'll be full go on Monday. Anything else?